This is the final video in this series. We're looking at how to create spin buttons and specifically how we can use code to speed up the process of creating those spin buttons. Let's get back into the spreadsheet. And yeah, we're doing pretty well with this task. Uh, it's looking good. We've managed to automate the process of creating the buttons and positioning the buttons. You can see they're all neatly aligned here. The final thing we have to do is to make sure each of the buttons is, is connected to the correct cell. At the moment, we can click on any of the buttons, they're all linked to cell D4. We can tell that easily by clicking on them. Uh, so what are we gonna have to do? Well, we're going to need another line of code in this routine to control the cell that each of the buttons is linked to. So how are we gonna do that? Well, we don't know the code, so what are we gonna do? It would be a good idea to record the code find the line of code we need, and then to recycle that, incorporate it into the routine we have here, that should uh, be able to allow us to complete this task. So let's do that. Let's get the code recorder going. Developer tab and record macro. Excel is now recording the code. And let's just call this uh, macro find cell link. That's an informative name. Hit enter, we're now recording code. And I'm going to click on this button. In fact, let's use the second button here. Click on this button, format control. And then this cell link, I'm going to change it to another cell. Hit enter, hit enter again. And that's what we want to do. If I click on this cell now, if I click on this spin button now, it should uh, change cell D5 rather than cell D4. So that's what we want to achieve. Now we can stop recording the code. Hit stop recording back to the Visual Basic Editor, Alt F11 shortcut on a PC. Alt F11, there we go. And we can see in the Visual Basic Editor, uh, down at the bottom here, we've got some new code. Try to manipulate this so you can see it easily uh, in your screenshots. Got some new code down at the bottom here. In fact, I'm just gonna reverse these two routines so you can see the code. There's the code, and we've got to look through this code and then consider what we don't need and what we do need, because during the recording process, Excel will record everything you do in the spreadsheet. We're not going to need all that. It's a case of going through the code and identifying what we do need. The good news is Excel VBA is fairly kind of forgiving as a coding language, and it looks like English, a lot of it. So by just reading the code, we should be able to gain a sense of what's uh, going on. And I'm interested in this code here. With selection, so this is referring to the button that's selected, with selection. Then we've got all of this here. And some of this is going to be useful, particularly this linked cell code. It says linked cell equals D5. You'll remember that I clicked on D5, so I set D5 as the linked cell. So this looks useful. The rest is less useful to us. Uh, we can get rid of the rest, but this should do the job here. And let's take this code and then we're gonna recycle it. We're gonna copy paste it into our other routine. And that should allow us uh, to move towards completing this task. So just outside of your screenshot, I've copy pasted that code into our first routine, you can see it there. That should do the job. Okay, so let's try this. Well, what we can see is that um, at the moment, every time Excel goes through the loop, remember we've got a four next loop here that we're going through nine times. And at the moment, every time Excel goes through, through the loop, it's going to set the linked cell as cell D5. So all of the buttons now, if we were to run the code, all of the buttons would be linked to cell D5. So that's not quite what we want. So what might we do to the code specifically? What might we do to this reference here in order to get all of the buttons pointing to the, the button, to the cell rather, on their row to get the whole thing working? Well, it's very similar to what we've done before. We're going to use the variable. Use the variable. Remember, we've created a variable which is called counter to control the loop. And the variable increases in value by one 
every time we go through the loop. And it's very common in code uh, to use that fact, you know, the fact that the variable is increasing by one to get things done in a spreadsheet position control or something else. In this case, we're using the variable to help us control the position of the cell, but also to help us control which um, cell the button is linked to. Okay, so we're controlling the position of the button and controlling the cell that the button is linked to. So let's try this, D and counter plus four. So again, I've replicated a, a pre-existing idea in the code. So just recycled some code there. And this should mean that the linked cell equals um, column D, so D something, D and counter plus four. So the first time Excel goes through the loop, the counter will be one. So the first time Excel goes through the loop, this value will calculate to D5. D and counter plus four, counter equals one, four plus one is five, D five. And obviously that's gonna increase by one every time we go through the loop because the value of counter is increasing by one every time we go through. So let's give this a go. I'm going to um, clear out the old buttons. There we go. And just get rid of this space at the top. We don't need that. Okay, and let's step into the code, see what happens. Okay, we've got our button position there. There we go. Okay, so we've I'll run it a few times, step through it a few times rather, and create a few buttons. There we go. Okay, let's stop the code there. And let's see what happens when we click on these buttons. So the first button points to cell D4. Second button now points to cell D5. Third button to cell D6, fourth button to cell D7. So let's go through that one more time. Why is that happening? Well, it's all to do with this line of code here. Uh, originally, we uh, recorded this code using the macro recorder, cleared out the stuff we didn't need. It's clear that this line of code, you know, even if you've got no experience with VBA, it's clear that this line of code is going to control the cell that the button is linked to. And then we've used D, for the column reference, used an and sign to connect the D, connect the text string to a variable. We're using the counter variable. Counter increases by one every time we go through the loop. That's how the loop works. The variable increases by one every time we go through. And then we just need to adjust the value here because we don't want the linked cell to be D1. Counter will be one the first time we go through the loop. We want it to be D5. So we can make this final adjustment at the end and that creates the effect we're looking for. So let's try it one more time. Delete um, the spin buttons. Back to module two. Duplicate the buttons. All the buttons are there. And then we can just test the buttons, test the one at the bottom. And there we go. Now you can see that when we run the code, uh, the value in each of these cells uh, does become the same as the value in cell D4. And that's not really ideal. Uh, it would be more sensible to set all of those values to zero. We can put an additional line of code here and you can find this line of code in the code we recorded when we recorded the code for changing the cell link. Uh, I'm going to put another line of code in there, uh, dot value equals zero. That should set all of the values uh, to zero, which is a much more sensible starting point. So let's try this code for a final time. Just going to delete all the buttons, module two, duplicate code, uh, and there we go. And as you can see, uh, these cell values all equal zero, which is a much more sensible uh, starting point. Then I can just um, adjust these values using the spin buttons. You can see all of the buttons really neatly aligned, um, all of the buttons connected uh, to the right cells, and the model seems to be working uh, really nicely. So one final look uh, at the code. This is what we're working with. Um, I had nine rows in my example, but if you were to change this number here, uh, you could uh, adapt this example to any number of rows. That could be, you know, uh, 50, 100, maybe even 1,000. Uh, so you can adapt this number here uh, to your example. Uh, but the rest of the code is fairly... Um, yeah, the rest of the code you won't need to change uh, too much. You might want to change some small 
details, you know, tweak the cell um, that the buttons appear in. My buttons all appear in column B. By changing this to column C or D, you could get the buttons appearing elsewhere. And also my linked cell is in column D, but if your linked cell is somewhere else in another column, you can just change this letter to the appropriate column. So you can adapt this example uh, to your needs. Okay, that's the end of this video series on spin buttons. We've gone through how to create a spin button and how to link it to a cell to get it working. But then we went through how to use code to create uh, multiple buttons. Clearly it will be really frustrating to have to create all those buttons manually. We can use uh, Visual Basic, copy some code, build in, a, build in a loop, control the position and control uh, the cell that the buttons are linked to, do all those things programmatically to get those buttons generating literally at the click of a button. That should allow you firstly to use spin buttons, but secondly to get um, exactly the number of spin buttons you need all positioned really nicely and working well. So that's the end uh, of this video series. Yeah, just to remind you, thanks to Michelle in Pennsylvania for sending in this video request. If you have any requests yourself and you can send a file in to me, it's not so helpful when people just say, I'd like to see a video on pivot tables or something like that. If you have a specific example and you can describe in text you know, over a few sentences, what you're looking for, give me some information to work with, uh, then uh, if your example will be beneficial to others too, and it would be a good way to demonstrate a technique, I might just do uh, a video series on it. Yeah, so definitely if you have an example like this, you want to learn a technique, send something to me. If not, not to worry, I'll see you in another video on the channel.